So, temperature, a measure of energy due to level of heat. Freezing point of water is 0 degree Celsius and boiling point of water is 100 degree Celsius. This is, this is very common. This We all know we have been studying this in the physics. Okay, So, the measure of energy to level of heat, the freezing point of water is 0 degree Celsius, water freezes there and boiling point of water is 100 degree Celsius, the phase change. So, this is basically the latent heat of fusion and the latent heat of vaporization. So, we all know about the sensible heat and the latent heat. Okay, So, the common temperature scales, we all know that at 100 degrees Celsius, see uh, you can see three different scales like Fahrenheit, Celsius and Kelvin. Okay, So, 100 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 212 degree Fahrenheit and is also equivalent to 373 degrees Kelvin. Okay, So, water boils uh, at the top position like the 100 degrees Celsius. Now, the room temperature is somewhere in the between. Now, if we talk about the 0 degrees Celsius, it is equivalent to 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 273 degrees Kelvin. Okay, So, if we talk about the absolute, so it is minus 273 degrees Celsius, it is 0 Kelvin and minus 460 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, This is, uh, these things we all know, I am just discussing the basics right now. Now, let us discuss what is heat. This is also very basic. Okay. So, you might have studied in your class 9th physics, class 10th physics. Okay. So, let us talk about this. Heat is the total internal kinetic energy due to molecular motion in an object. As I have already shown you uh, in the conduction, see how, how the particles are vibrating. Okay. And uh, suppose if in a convection, how you know uh, it is happening, means uh, how you know the density the change in density taking place and uh, you know is 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 actually creating the motion and that's how the heat is getting transferred okay so heat is the total internal kinetic energy due to molecular motion in an object okay now the quantity of heat is btu or kilojoules okay now kilojoules is in systeme international that is si unit that we are very much aware of and btu is in imperial british units so btu is basically british thermal units okay so one btu is the amount of heat required to raise one pound of water by one degree fahrenheit okay that's the definition that's a very standard definition and one calorie is required to raise one gram of water by one degree celsius okay so these are basically same but the you know the nomenclature the unit is different but they are actually representing heat okay so one calorie is 4.2 joules and one btu is 1.055 kilojoules or 1055 joules. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now, what is heat and what's temperature? Heat versus temperature. So, heat energy depends on mass. Temperature is independent of mass. Okay, a fatter body, a uh, means a fatter person, can can also have fever. Okay, and a thinner person can also have fever. Means a lean body can also be crunched with fever and why so uh, you know uh, it should have been the case like the fat guy should have more body temperature it does happen it uh, it is because of like internal uh, you know regulatory functions like the blood pressures and all uh, that we are not discussing right now but the body temperature the body temperature is an absolute term so temperature is independent of mass but heat energy depends on mass now what is heat energy you know the calories that a fat guy will burn will be more than a calories that lean guy will burn doing the same amount of metabolic exercise metabolic conditioning exercise okay so the first thing that you should remember is heat energy depends on mass and temperature is independent of mass the example is very much perfect that i've given you that a fat guy if he runs he will burn more energy than a lean guy because it is in uh, it is dependent on mass calories means heat it is dependent on mass but the temperature means the hot guy will uh, means the fat guy will also be crunched with fever and the leaner guy will also be down with fever so the rise in temperature doesn't depend on any mass okay but what i have given you is given you a biological example you can take it with any physical or chemical example okay so 2 liters of boiling water has more heat energy than 1 liter of boiling water okay you all know okay so temperature is not energy but a measure of it heat is energy okay heat the unit is joules okay energy again it's joules 
Now, if you talk about rate of heat dissipation, then the power comes into picture, heat power. Okay, so we're not discussing the power right now. So this is another very important point. The temperature is not energy, but it's a measure of heat. Okay, and heat is definitely energy, as the unit suggests. Heat is energy. When heat, that is energy, goes into a substance, one of the two things can happen: temperature goes up, change of state. Okay, we all know the temperature can goes up means the delta T means suppose uh, as we have already seen in the last lecture that we are actually heating one. Uh, means we were heating that one particular rod in, in inside which the molecules were jumping from one part to another part actually what's happening is the temperature was rising from one part to the another part because the metal rod cannot have the change of state in, with that heat if it melts that's a different thing but uh, generally we do not apply in homely conditions we do not apply so much amount of heat that it it changes phase now change of state change of state is what what we see very oftenly is that uh, you know when we boil water okay to certain extent 200 degrees Celsius in one atmospheric pressure but you know uh, you should uh, keep this in mind that Delhi in Delhi the water will boil much faster than in Chennai because Chennai is very much at lower height than Delhi Delhi is 216 meters altitude okay and Chennai is just six meters altitude okay so more is the altitude lesser is the atmospheric pressure okay and when lesser is the atmospheric pressure so vapor pressure increases when you tries to uh, uh, when you try to boil up the liquid and vapor pressure you know overcomes the atmospheric pressure very soon because atmospheric pressure is lesser okay now the, when the temperature goes up heat that causes a rise in temperature that is heating water before boiling okay heat that causes a rise in temperature that is heating water before boiling the heat energy is used to increase the kinetic energy of the molecules in the substance. This is known as sensible heat. So, since class 9th physics, you, uh, you are aware of this term, sensible heat, another one will be the latent heat. Okay, sensible heat means, suppose if you are boiling water from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, you have to provide him the heat. Okay, till then, there won't be any phase change. But just going a delta Q or the delta heat, just after that, okay will actually change its phase so from 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius this is the sensible heat and the process is the heat energy is used to increase the kinetic energy of the molecules in the substance okay so this is known as sensible heat sensible heat it literally means that you can sense that heat means it is going up 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 or it is coming down 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 okay now the change of state the another one is heat that brings about a change in potential energy of the molecules temperature remains constant also called the latent heat okay so you can see the solid ice okay the heat absorb okay now what's happening is uh, see liquid water you can see this one liquid water when you're actually heating up this is the liquid water when you're actually heating up okay so it is actually going to change it in gas so this is a phase change this is a phase change okay then gas if you condense heat release means condense okay there will be a phase change phase change here as well okay what's next now if you solidify the water freeze it becomes solid solid ice phase change okay and when you heat up the ice or if you just keep it in the room temperature it will start melting so again it will absorb the heat from the room and there will be liquid again phase change so as you can see we are not we are neither heating it up nor we are cooling it down means the sensible part is not the condition here so what's happening in that constant temperature we are just changing its phase by changing the potential energy of the molecules okay so that's what's written heat that brings about a change in potential energy of the molecules while keeping the temperature constant it's called latent heat latent is a greek word and it means uh, it means hidden okay so let me just erase it up
okay so let's go specific heat okay so specific heat it is the heat required to the temperature of 1 kg a pound of a substance by 1 degree Kelvin or Fahrenheit okay so what's happening is what's the specific heat specific heat is suppose if you are uh, boiling water okay we all know that the specific heat of boiling water is uh, means the specific heat of water is 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin see it's written there examples water specific heat is 1 BTU per pound degree Fahrenheit or 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin what it what does it mean it means that to increase to increase the temperature by 1 degree Kelvin for 1 kilogram of water you need to supply 4.2 kilojoules okay similarly the air specific heat as you can see it requires it requires 1 kilojoules okay so this is the difference so uh, suppose uh, you might have seen that experiment that if you hold the balloon empty balloon means uh, empty means it's air inside it it will blast it will burst if you keep it on the candle flame but if you pour water into it it will burst again but after later time after a long time after a long time why because the heat the specific heat of water is more so it it has the capacity of absorbing more heat than air okay now we all know sizing heat capacity it's a very general equation that you, you have already seen the quantity of heat required is mcp delta t okay so it's the mass of the liquid specific heat means the mass here yeah, the mass of the liquid the specific heat of that particular fluid I will say not the liquid it could be gas as well and the delta T so it's basically sensible okay and if you talk about the latent if you talk about the latent so this this is sensible sensible heat sizing okay for latent sizing it will be m dot into hg minus hf so this is latent heat of uh, this is the enthalpy of gas and this is the enthalpy of fluid so we commonly call it as hfg okay so it could be latent heat of vaporization it could be latent heat of condensation okay so you just read this numerical what is the heat required to raise air temperature from 15 degrees celsius to 25 degrees celsius at a flow rate of 2000 liters per second so what could be the answer the answer is delta t you already you can see it's 10 degrees celsius 2000 liters per seconds okay so it's air so you need to convert it from uh, liters per seconds to kilograms per seconds had it been water then it would have been same okay so you have delta t you have kg per seconds means mass flow rate this is not only the mass this is mass flow rate we generally refer to this as m dot its units is kg per second this is not you know that mass that is you know weight into g this is not this okay so this is basically mass flow rate okay okay if there is a temperature now let's talk about this heat transfer okay if there is a temperature difference in a system heat will always move from higher to lower temperatures what is actually flowing okay if there is a temperature difference as I have already told you for establishing heat transfer you need to have delta T so some heat will always move from high temperature to low temperatures that you already know 